I'm Erin O'Byrne and welcome to Everything EFL Podcast. I'm passionate about serving teachers and I offer training for schools and institutions whose language teachers need a little refresher, a change of mindset and some super practical ideas to put into their classrooms straight away. There is no one size fits all lesson plan, but you've got a friend and support system in me. I can help reduce your overwhelm, give you some teacher inspiration and improve your work-life balance. How? With some solid advice, takeaways you can try out immediately and some much needed teacher love because your well-being is important too. Are you ready to make small changes one step at a time and remember how amazing you are? Let's go. Hello, you gorgeous teacher. Welcome to Everything EFL Podcast. If you're one of my lovely regular listeners, welcome back. If you're a brand new listener, you are most welcome and I hope you stick around. As I have previously mentioned, I am officially open for business. I am available for online CPD sessions and in-house CPD sessions in and around the Dublin area. I do tailor-made workshops, so email me at erin at refreshyourteaching.com. Now today, I want to talk about beginners and lower levels. There are many theories about learning and we don't all have to agree. But when I started teaching, I thought that, you know, it was all about getting students to speak and, and that will help them learn. But if you really think about it, getting them to speak, how much good does that actually do? I mean, invariably it gets, we, you know, we get them to utter prescribed phrases. You know, have you got any brothers and sisters? Yes, I have. What time do you get up? I get up at seven o'clock and all of that. Oh, I'm losing the will to live just thinking about it. Look, it's fine. There's nothing wrong with it as one tool. But, and it's a big but, please excuse me, I have a sore throat. Beginners need input. You can't expect too much from them. You have to give something to them. I'm speaking in very simplified terms here. You know, they have to see, hear, read the language in order to absorb it. They need tons of exposure in different contexts. And this is easily demonstrated in all levels. I mean, think about after you've beaten your students over the head with a certain grammar point and a week later they don't use it properly or they don't remember the rules or whatever. They just haven't been exposed to it enough in order to produce it independently. And if your students aren't really doing that much outside of class to improve their language, I think, which I think is quite a common problem, um, you do need to find ways to repeat, recycle and switch contexts. More on that later. Back to why learners need repeated exposure to language. Well, you know, they need time for the brain to actually learn. And this only happens when the language has been experienced in a multitude of ways. Remember, everything is a what process. The problem is, you can go over the basics again and again, getting them to produce isolated utterances, but what they need is context and repeated exposure. Students need to go through lots of highly controlled tasks before you can expect them to really independently produce. This includes lots of phonological activities, recycling, reusing words and phrases and grammatical structures, noticing gap fills. You know, I'm not a fan, but sometimes they do have their place. Like you could do a gap fill in the form of a dialogue rather than 10 sentences or look, there are millions of things you can do. But the things in this episode are very simple and practical and they don't require too much extra prep because you know I'm not a fan of that. So I'm going to talk you through three to four easy ways to really sort of incorporate input into your class. Now the first one is dialogues. Now you know I'm a fan of dialogues. I'm talking about generating your own using ChatGPT. The benefit is you can tailor the dialogue to your students, what they've already learned, what they're learning now. We talked about this before, but I'll remind you in case you've never used it. Basically, you can choose the language or phrases you want to go in the dialogue. So I'll give you an example. So last week we practiced the structure have got and I wanted to show different contexts. So even at beginner level, the learners can see that have got goes a little bit further than, you know, have you got any brothers and sisters or I've got a dog, right? Um, I don't want to overload them with sort of extra new language. I'm just using different contexts that, you know, they are all as humans super familiar with. Remember, if they can make a connection to the language, it becomes meaningful and they're much more likely to remember it. You open up GPT and you put in a prompt, something along the lines of, please create a dialogue. I don't know why I always say please, you know, it, I'm just, I've just got good manners. Please create a dialogue about two students living in Dublin. They're in a clothes shop. Please include the following phrases. Have you got time for a quick coffee? The only unfamiliar word might be quick. 
uh, I've got an idea. Idea might be new as well. I haven't got the money for it. Um, I've included a pronoun there. More on that in a minute. I've got loads of things to do today. So they've already been exposed to things and lots of in past lessons. Let's, I put that in there as well because we have touched on it before in a previous dialogue. So let's recycle that. So a lot of these things they've already been exposed to. There's maybe one or two little words there, but that's it. Now, if what ChatGPT generates is too difficult, just ask it to simplify it and then you can copy and paste it into Word and tweak it until you're happy with it. But the idea here is that you're inputting the language that you want the students to practice. Next, you can ask it to create some questions. I did multiple choice. Check very carefully that all the language in the dialogue and the questions are appropriate for the level. AI isn't perfect. You should always have total control over the content. AI is a tool, not a substitute. It will never substitute you, my darling gorgeous teacher. Now, before you start shouting at me, I'm not advocating just teaching chunks to beginners, but I do try to include at least one dialogue per week so that, you know, the learners can be drilled more on that in a bit and role play it. And there's so many advantages to this. They can learn so much. If you use chunks and patterns that are common, they'll invariably come across them again. And you will as a class because they will come up in the textbook. Next comes analysis. Let's go a little bit deeper. What does that mean? Well, first, can the students identify all the phrases with got in the dialogue? The first two have been highlighted for them. Uh, we've talked about the word phrase a few times, but it's always good to come back to these core words and concepts they need in the classroom. Now, this can be a very interesting exercise because some of them invariably just highlight have got or maybe like have got and then the next word but what you want them to do is realize what a phrase is so have you got time for a quick coffee yeah i haven't got the money for it that's the complete phrase okay so you're reinforcing the concept of a phrase there and you're also highlighting really useful chunks then i created a match the sentence halves activity there was about six sentences cut in half and they had to match them i created that myself took me five minutes again just more exposure to the language it's a controlled task and it's kind of tests their power of you know some of the sentences were questions can they identify the appropriate answers some of them were sentences cut in half so can they identify the next word to make it a coherent sentence so all this stuff's really good on a, a sort of a more grammatical way as well I'm not asking them to produce much at the moment more power to your learners if they do but I'd argue it's not as important as laying a solid foundation in order for them to talk with more confidence a little later I have a student in my class. She can barely speak. That's OK. I'm monitoring her. She'll get there. I can't make her speak if the language isn't in her brain at the moment or if the confidence isn't there. Digression. Learners need this process. It's evident. Um, one day I taught have got, has got. I did like a, a circle, you know, produce the sentences, you know, like she's got a brother, I've got a brother, that kind of thing. And they all struggled with it, um, probably because it was slightly isolated, but because the language hadn't really assimilated in their brain yet. And I've been asking them the same questions for the last few weeks. How long have you been here? What do you do? What does he do? Where's she from? You know, and they still have issues struggling with that third person S. And even the stronger ones who've studied this stuff before, you know, they still struggled a little bit. So, you know, going back to my point that just getting them to talk isn't quite enough. They need to see and hear the language, different contexts and situations. So, yes, get them speaking, but make sure they are getting the exposure too. End of digression. Next, I wanted to create awareness of different contexts for have got. I created a table with different categories, time, possessions, family, pets, etc. And I got the learners to highlight all the phrases with have got in the dialogue, like I said. And then they copied those highlighted phrases from the dialogue into the table under the right categories. Then, controversially, some might say, I wrote a paragraph on the whiteboard and I asked them to use their translator apps because now they all have this app where they can take a picture and it translates the whole text into English now, into their language, sorry. Now, um, obviously, generally, I don't allow them, but I wanted to say something important to them. I wanted to let them know that it is important to, you know, to see have got in different contexts. Um, and I said a little bit more, but basically I couldn't have said this um, so that everyone in class understood it without the translation app. So we read it. I said, are you OK? Are we happy? Yes, we moved on. And I'm going to keep doing this when I have something important to say because I have mixed nationalities and they're very low level, but I firmly believe that, you know, we should let our learners in on the process of learning and how their brain works. So, you know, this sets a good foundation uh, for beginners to focus on the process rather than the outcome. Good habits.
Now, what other things can you do to exploit this dialogue in future lessons for a mini task? Because, you know, I'm a big proponent of reusing materials. And of course, you don't always have time in one lesson, but, you know, get them to keep the dialogue and you can always come back to it and, and have a look at it in a different way. So, you know, you can look at pronouns, highlight them and ask them what they refer to. And I've been doing this a lot with any text with my beginners because I think it's so important for these learners to recognise these words and what they mean. Uh, we take it for granted, but it is a skill. And, you know, I've done this kind of noticing exercises with high levels and, and sometimes they get the reference wrong and maybe they haven't been explicitly taught this, you know. Different noticing exercises. See episode 103 for more ideas on that. Um, but going back to the dialogue, you can just do a role play. You can get them to take on personas. Maybe one person can read the first line and you can hold up a flashcard with an emotion like happy, angry, sad, and they have to do it in that voice. And then the next person, you hold up another flashcard and, you know, they have to read the line and act it out in that emotion. And, you know, this this will create great laughter, but you're still recycling and reusing and revisiting that language and those chunks but in a slightly different way with a lot of laughter. Now, if you want more ideas with dialogues, go to episode 86. But my main point is provide your learners with exposure. And you might argue it's not exactly authentic, but I mean, are the course books texts you're using completely realistic and authentic? Um, and, you know, how often do you find any authentic dialogues that beginners can handle? Like I said, if you input phrases and words that you think your students need to know or they've been exposed to before, you can introduce them to new language in a very manageable way. Now I'm going to give you a fabulous activity that my friend Sinead McMorrow gave me. She's a brilliant teacher. She actually features in two very early episodes of mine, episode 35 and episode 37, so check those out as well. So the aim of this activity is to create a dialogue, do lots of drilling, and get students to memorize really useful chunks of conversational English without overloading them. Everything should be meaningful and easily understood, even if it's a new phrase. Don't put too much new vocabulary, if any, in there, but perhaps a few really useful structures. So this is what I did. I got all my learners standing by the board and I used my name and my twin teacher's name, Jeff, and I created a situation where myself and Jeff were students in Dublin. For some reason, I was from Mexico, and it went something like this. Now, I'm going to read the dialogue to you. I'm going to break down my decisions. So Jeff starts by saying, how are you? Um, and then Erin says, I'm grand, which is very Irish. Are you a new student? Now, to be has already been taught within the context of school, though. This is a perfect question for my students because they're going to be making conversations with students all the time. And then Jeff says, yes, I'm Jeff. What's your name? They've already seen that. So nothing too difficult so far. And then Erin says, my name's Erin. Contraction there. It's very cold here. So we're looking at to be, but in a slightly different context, the weather, instead of just, you know, the usual nationalities and jobs, which is where kind of to be usually goes to in a course book, isn't it? And also the weather is a very common topic of small talk in Ireland. So it's very culturally useful and appropriate. And also the word here, it might be new for the really low levels, but it's easy to mime. And you know what I'm talking about. You use both index fingers to point at the floor at the same time here. And then in Mexico, it's very hot. So, you know, same again, weather, small talk. And then Jeff says, do you want to get a coffee? Which we change to, do you want to get a coffee? Great phrase. We spent some time breaking this down. We changed want to to wanna. Uh, they have that exposure to that spoken English. And, you know, do you wanna can be used in a million different contexts. So you bet your ass I'm coming back to that in a, a later dialogue. And then we, we talked about get meaning buy, because why not? Because that's what we say. And then Erin says, yes, let's go to Butler's. Butler's is a famous coffee shop in Ireland. It's a chain, very, very famous for their hot chocolate. Let's go. OK, that's very easily mimed and understood. And again, it's a great verb pattern to learn even at this stage. And I'm going to talk about that um, more in a little bit. So I say, let's go to Butler's. I love hot chocolate. And then Jeff says, ooh, me too. <laughs> great response. Uh, very natural. And then he says, where is it? So again, we're using a pronoun there. And then Erin says, it's on Dame Street. So we're looking at the preposition on. And then I say, it's two minutes from here. Again, this is very easily dealt with with a quick diagram on the board. And that was the dialogue. But every time I wrote a line on the board, we drilled. We looked at connections and we drilled. And then I drilled and I drilled. And then I wrote another line, drilled them. 
and then half of them were Erin, half of them were Jeff, and then we swapped over. Another line, drilling, Erin, Jeff, split the class up. So they, they're repeating it a lot, right? And then right at the end, when everything's done, you start wiping out a few words and then you get them to do the dialogue again in pairs. And then you wipe out a couple more words and you wipe out a few more words. And every time you wipe out words, you get them to repeat the dialogue. Stronger students can look away from the board, weaker students can look at the board. If you like, you can get them to take a photo of the completed dialogue before you start wiping the words so that the really weak students have something. But I have to say that the really weak students did really, really well because we had done so much drilling and repetition, they remembered the missing words. I was so surprised and they were super engaged. And at the end of class, they all clapped because they were so delighted and happy with each other. And one of the students actually came up to me used his translator to say something like, how come something so complicated can be so easy for us? Which I took to mean, you know, they've learnt loads and understood it, even though they've probably never used this language before. You know, he really saw the value in it. And then the next week I did a part two, basically a continuation of the conversation. And, you know, the same kind of thing, drilling and stuff like that. I um, repeated things like, let's go and do you want to? But I think this time it was, do you want to get a beer? I asked the students to finish the sentence for me. We switched the context from a coffee shop to a pub. And then, you know, just lots of drilling and stuff. And then what I did was at the beginning of this week is I used that second conversation because we hadn't spent quite as much time on it. And I printed it out and I cut it up and I gave each student one line and they had to, you know, mingle and reorder it. And then again, we, you know, they did it again and again. Am I going to do a part three? Absolutely. This is going to be like a continuing story. They're going to get invested in it because they're helping to create it. And they're familiar with me and they're familiar with my twin, Jeff. I'd love you to try that. OK, I really would. And if you need any clarification on what to do, just DM me or email me. Um, all my details are in the show notes. So sticking with sort of dialogues in a way, you can use text and transcripts. The only difference is you don't really have the control over the content, but you do have the control over what you do with them. So again, lots of noticing activities, get students to read aloud, highlight sound spelling patterns. You know, there are so many little activities that you can do with one text or transcript. You can do it over a series of lessons, revisiting the same material. There's nothing wrong with that. And at the end of the day, those beginners do need that repetition. They need it. They need to see the language again and again and again. The next idea is graded readers. No, it's not authentic. But, you know, Krashen's really into compelling and comprehensive input. Um, there's lots of evidence to suggest that reading is a very good way of learning the language. And if you couple that with an audio as well, so that students are listening to the language, they're listening to how things are pronounced, I think it can be quite powerful. And when I actually said to them they're going to read a book, it was like, ah, horror, no, you know. But I gave them time to read the first chapter at home, right? So they've got control over that. They can use their translators. They can write the translations down if they want next to the words, all of that. So they're in control of that. That gives them a little bit of power back, right? A little bit of confidence. And then we started chapter one in class. Now, I chose a book called Red Roses, which is on YouTube. If you go, if you go to YouTube and put in Learn English Through Story Red Roses, um, you'll find it. And for the PDF, just, um, just Google it and you'll find it and you can download it. Now, coincidentally, the week before, the word rose and wonderful and let's all sort of came up uh, because we'd listened to What a Wonderful World. And I'd introduce let's in the dialogue and a few other random bits and pieces. And, you know, these things all came up in the book as well as lots of other useful stuff. But it's just a great example of if you show and expose your students to super common sort of words, phrases, structures, they will come up again and again. So in class, we listened to it. They did the comprehension exercises. Um, and then what I did was you know, we, we listened and read it again on the projector and I pointed out the previously taught things like, you know, oh, look, let's blah, 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 you know, that kind of thing. And then I also introduced a sound spelling for the week, I consonant E for the I sound, like fine and nice. And now I chose this spelling pattern at random, but this is something that I'm decided that I'm going to do um, every week. I'm going to choose a sound and 
any kind of text we come across, we're going to try and identify words with that sound. The sharper ones spotted things like medicine and live, which have the same spelling but different sounds. So I got by that by writing 95% on the board next to the words with the I sound, like nice and outside, and then 5% next to medicine and live and kind of explained, you know, this is kind of the ratio of the sound spelling. They got it. They were fine with that. Then we did uh, a disappearing drill. So all of those words with the I sound, with the spelling I consonant E, they were on a, there were about nine or 10 of them on the board. We drilled them and then I wiped one off, drilled them again, wiped another one off, drilled it again uh, until there were no more words left. And they had a great time with that. They thought it was hilarious. And then, you know, you can use the text for little noticing activities if you like. In my last pre-intermediate class I had, we did a book and we just spent 10 minutes one day on a couple of pages highlighting all the irregular past verbs because that's what they were doing at the time. The final thing I want to talk about is you and the way you talk. Now, we're often told that TTT, teacher talk time, is wrong and we have to minimise it. But in a beginner or low level class, Learners are not going to be having conversations or always giving answers beyond a sentence, okay? So again, this goes back to exposure, obviously reuse and recycle in the form of dialogues, pointing out previously learned stuff in any texts and all that. But they're not just going to learn in quotation marks and produce just because you've done it a bit in class, right? So they need to hear examples from you because you're the voice that they're hearing the most. So pitch your language carefully and try to provide lots of examples of the language they've been exposed to and what you're teaching at the moment. What do I mean? Well, after teaching let's go to butlers from that dialogue, I use let's lots, ooh, let's lots in my class. So just before we do something, I write on the board something like, let's play a game, let's talk, let's read, right? Have got, which has come up, uh, which came up last week. I tried to pepper it throughout the lessons. Have you got the time, Hector? Helen, have you got your notebook with you? Has everyone got a highlighter? Oh, I've got an idea. Let's play a game. You know, I often come up with these little activities on the spot um, and I share this moment by saying, I've got an idea. It's a great little chunk and they've already seen it in the dialogue with have got that I generated from ChatGPT earlier. Have you got a highlighter? If the student says no, I say, would you like a highlighter? Because I always have a store of them. I introduce would you like last week with some chocolate biscuits just for the hell of it I just thought it's not too early to learn that they don't have to know that would is a modal verb like it doesn't matter they understood when I held out the biscuit and I said would you like a biscuit they completely understood so every week I'm going to bring them in a little treat and I'm going to ask them if they would like something I don't want to overload you. There is a lot in this episode. So maybe listen again and take notes. And I challenge you to take one idea you like and try it out in class. What do you think your class would respond to? What do you have time for? And as a reward for getting to the end of this lesson, I'm going to give you my word version of the have got lesson that I've been talking about all this episode. It's a word document, so you can adapt it to your class. You might want to change the context a little to suit your learners. I would if I were you. It's rare that someone else's lesson plan suits your class so perfectly. So read it, tweak it, use it. You can get the lesson plan by DMing me on Instagram or LinkedIn. My details are in the show notes if you don't already follow me. I am mainly on LinkedIn, though, at the moment. If you are a member of my Breathe Easy Teacher newsletter community, hit reply on one of my previous emails and request the lesson plan. If you'd like to join my newsletter community, the link is in the show notes. It's only once a month, so it's not too intrusive, and I'm always available to answer any queries or help you with any struggles you're having. I'm always there for you, teacher. My mission is to serve you. So that's it. There was quite a lot in there. That was a very juicy episode, I feel. I'd love to know how you feel about it. Also, if you want to tell other people how you feel about it, you can give me a five star review on Spotify or iTunes. You can share any of my posts or just give me a shout out on LinkedIn if you like. If you're on LinkedIn or Instagram and you like what I do, give me a shout out. Tell the world about everything EFL. If you would like me to work in your school or institution, send me an email at erin at refreshyourteaching.com. I'd love to hear from you and I'd love to make a CPD session for your school. And I think that's it. As always, take care of yourself. Have a peaceful week and share the love. Bye. <laughs>